and we are now ready to jump into our next run. So let us start Ease 9 Monstrum Nox by Ghost Kumo. Take it away, Ghost. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Ghost Kumo, and this is East 9 Monstrum Nox, the most recently released game in the East series. Uh, if you follow GDQ in the last year and a half, you might have heard of this game because this game is uh, published by one of GDQ's sponsors, Nipponichi Software America. Um, they've been advertising this game. It's actually a really cool speed game, and it's been it it was so badly broken that it actually was broken before we even knew who was going to be publishing it. I mean, before we knew that uh, a release date in the West, like it's been that broken. And the PC version has a whole new host of exploits. Um, so this game being the latest in the series, there are a few elements normally within the game that are a bit spoilery, but we're not really going to encounter that much of the run because we skip, we skip a lot of the game. So uh, my explanations of the story will be kind of um, minimal uh, because there's a lot to cover here. So we're going to be doing this run on the easy difficulty, um, mostly because it's about the only difficulty that I really think we can reliably beat this game at right now. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started here in just a second. Um, time will start when I say no here. Um, we'll be playing in the English voices and you'll grow very tired of them very, uh, very quickly after a certain point of the run. Um, I usually mix it up between the two. I don't think either dub is better. Uh, but just to let you know on that. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, in, am I good to count down? I want to make sure, just want to make sure on the stream end. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, five, four, three, two, one, and go. So, really cool thing about this game, you can actually skip cutscenes for the most part. Um, what happened? No reports and the thing you'll see very quickly is a lot of the movement in this game is really silly. You have this comically exaggerated somersault for your movement. Um, but anyways, this is our protagonist, Adel Kristen, uh, the main character of the East series. Um, he's basically the main character of every game, except for Origin, which happens, like, hundreds of years before the events of the series, but they all, they're all just, every game in the series tells a, a different story of his, of his adventures, in a way. Um, but we're breaking out of prison right now, because this game starts off in medias res. There we go. So now I just got a weapon, which means that I can advance uh, the game here. There's a lot of triggers here to memorize. Uh, but yeah, the movement in this game gets a little weird. There's a lot of rolling, but Adol can also f uh, flop like a fish. And it's actually faster. Um, so yeah, this is a monster form, which um, I can do that. That's called a Crimson Line, and it's a uh, dash ability that it... Uh, you'll see these context-sensitive prompts here and there. Uh, let me dash. So I have to open this chest to advance the game. All right. Cool thing is we also have a double jump here. Those bars are really finicky. So yeah, you buffer attack into roll and you do this weird flop thing. It's only faster on at all. Um, this game has six playable characters. We're actually only going to be picking up three of them to run. So here's a mini boss. So, uh, the basis of combat, um, I have an attack and then I have four skills that I can bind to the face button. Um, currently I only have one bound to my circle button, but I can be activated by uh, pressing the trigger and the, the button. Uh, combat in this game, um, new to uh, East 8 and East 9 is uh, aerial combat. So this boss just got stunned, which means that I can just unload on him. I'm mostly doing downward thrust because it's quick, easy damage. Uh, so right there I got a flash guard. Um, flash guards parry all damage, uh, meaning I don't take any damage. And uh, give me a couple seconds of mini crits, noted by a little uh, orange bar. So that's basically it for the prologue. Uh, we're getting started on chapter one here.
Um, it's gonna basically backtrack us a little bit. So, back 10 days. I'm gonna make a save here, because this cutscene is surprisingly prone to crashing. This has happened in, uh, in marathon runs before of this game. So yeah, we get arrested because, um, Ol has had so many adventures at this point in the in the series. Uh, aren't adventures here are really weird. Adol has had so many adventures that the people of this town immediately think he's suspicious with all the like powerful artifacts that he's been dealing with in his life. Um, but we have escaped from many prisons, so Adol knows his way around jail by now. He has he's broken out of several uh, prisons at this point in the series, <laughs> so this is nothing new to him. Alright, so we're gonna skip ahead uh, to after the prison break, and then now we're uh, off at night, but we need to find ourselves a place to hide. Luckily there's a um, an abandoned house here that nobody seems to look in the basement for, so we're gonna hide out in the basement here. Uh, I did not mean to skip that. This I mean to skip. Yeah, so we need to navigate around town with a disguise. Um, so we get a, uh, a blue wig. Oh, you have blue hair this game. I think it's supposed to be black, but black hair kind of generally sucks in video game engines, so they give it a blue tint. Uh, by the way, jumping upstairs is faster than rolling. So I need to survey the uh, landscape of this town here, so we're going to see about uh, what all is in going on in this place here called Ball Duke, which is the um, central location of, of this game. So we find out that we have a wanted poster, and this weird event happens here where the night goes red, and we awaken in our monster form uh, with five other individuals. Uh, those are going to be our; those are supposed to be our party members. Um, but yeah, every now and then, uh, this thing called a Grimwald opens up, and I have to fight these waves of enemies here along with these currently AI-controlled. Uh, future party members that I will never actually recruit. And my allies are being useless. Right. If there's a lot if it sounds like there's a lot going on, believe me there is. So I'm trying to just get kills here and my allies are not picking up the stragglers. So I need to clear two waves of enemies here. The second wave is just a boss, though, and it's actually more like a mini boss, but he's pretty easy to deal with. I'm just repeatedly using my downward thrust attack and uh, skill to finish them off. So that's wave one done. Uh, not very good, but <laughs> it's a marathon run. I don't really care too much. Yeah, my estimate's an hour 33. Um, this should not take that long. The run would have to be an absolute disaster for that to happen. And this guy completely ignored me, which sometimes he does. I'm trying to attack my uh, crystal here, called the Sphene. Uh, if that breaks, it's over, but he doesn't do nearly enough damage because it's basically the tutorial raid. Yeah, they brought these back from East 8. These were introduced in East 8. They were nobody's favorite mechanic, and I don't know why they brought them back, but they're there. So I'm going to get a bunch of useful rewards here um, for clearing this with an S rank. The most useful reward I get is a um, is a um, elixir. Um, now the elixir normally is a staff buff, but it's actually better to sell it than to use it. Uh, yes, I do, as mentioned in chat, I do have the white cat plush here in the background. So we're entering chapter 2, which is the chapter where we get white cat, who's the most useful party member of this run. Uh, White Cat's Melancholy. So we find out in this particular scene, um, in which... Huh, which we're kind of navigating around town again and figuring out a bunch of different places here that uh, we can't leave for the city of Balduke because the curse of the monstrums that... Uh, 
affects us and, you know, transforms us into what's called a, a character called the Crimson King. It's a sort of alter ego where Adol gets decked out with a super cool, like, flashy blade and the super edgy vampire looking kind of outfit. Um, but there's these barriers all around town, and normally the game is uh, sequenced in such a way that as you do uh, each individual chapter, you slowly unlock more and the barriers uh, clear up. Uh, operative word being uh, normally. <laughs> Alright, so this is the Pendletons. They're a very rich family in a... Uh, in prison city, so there's all sorts of nonsense going on here. I'll warp back out here, and I'm gonna go buy an accessory. I'm kind of just stocking up on whatever, like, decent items there are available. And I forgot the camera does that. <laughs> this guy gives me a... better sword. I'm gonna move back over to the wanted poster here, talk to this guy, and we're gonna get a bottle. Now you're gonna notice the item getting sound effect sounds like the one from Metroid. Uh, that was intentional. The very first East composer was Yuzo Koshiro. Yes, that y Yuzo Koshiro of Streets of Rage and Etrian Odyssey fame. Um, uh, he just straight up ripped it whole hog from, uh, from the original Metroid because he thought he liked the way it sounded. He's like, this communicates that you just got something good. And so he just more or less just completely lifted it. Alright, so I'm going over here to the docks. Uh, the next area that I need to go to is across this river, but unfortunately there's a barrier here. Um, so to unlock that, I need to basically do a purge. Um, uh, what's called a Grimwald. But I need to build up enough Nox points on the top right. So I got an enemy wave here. Oh. This here's Doll. She's pretty cool. She's probably my favorite character in this game. Just really cool moveset. And thankfully she's back in the route. Uh, let's just put this on there. I picked the wrong scale, but whatever. It's fine. I need to clear up four of these orbs here. Position myself to set this warp. I don't need this warp point anymore. What am I doing? We actually routed that out. The game has experienced a bit of a route change, and I'm having to kind of mentally adjust a little bit to that. So... Yeah, that's why I say this run is probably going to be underestimate unless something absolutely catastrophic happens here. Yeah, you'll see on the top uh, left, I now have 90 Nox points, which are filling up every time I'm killing one of these little mini uh, encounters here. So, um, now that we've done that, uh, we can go and trigger this, uh, uh, Grimwald here. I'm probably mixing up the terms. It's been a while since I played this game casually. Uh, but there's these enemies here called the Lemuries, uh, that appear only in the Grimwalds, um, or the raids, I guess. So we're gonna be doing another raid here. Um, but this part's just going to be a, another two-wave enemy gauntlet, so if you want to, you know, if you want to do any some hope, free donations, plugs, etc. Thank you. Uh, we have officially hit the Make Argic Wear a Sonic Costume incentive, so, and apologies for calling it cursed, it is of course a incredibly blessed Sonic costume, he'll be wearing that in his next run. We are currently working on our super, mo super monkey ball banana mania dark banana mode incentive and if you're unaware what dark banana mode is it's if you touch a banana you die and i think, I think we all want to see that right that was definitely cleaner than the last one yeah, this game story is definitely very goofy and i'm not going to be able to even explain the half of it So, 
I haven't really talked too much about skills. Um, each one has a certain number of skill points that it uses, which is noted by the little um, blue kind of circle on the bottom right. Um, 100 is uh, half of is half a circle there. You can max it out up, up to 200, but we're only ever going to use 100 in the run, and I messed up there. I'm very bad about manipulating my camera in this run, because it's it's bound to an unusual button. You can lock onto enemies, but um, I'm pretty bad about it, honestly, at this point. Just because it's just a weird button for me. Alright, so we got one little uh, mini-boss here. Lord of the Night. Um, also noted by the little uh, yellow circle, if that fills a pathway, I can go into a state called Boost, and then very soon I'll unlock uh, the extra skill, which is um, like a super powerful kind of like finishing type move. Um, but Boost is going to be very important. Alright, now I can finally enter the sewers. Uh, so this area is called Cloaca Maxima, um, named for an old Italian or Italian or French sewer. I think it's Italian. Uh, but I'm going to activate boost here, and this uh, greatly improves my speed with my dodge roll. And we're going to come up on a mini boss that we're not going to fight because of a... Uh, an intended little programming quirk in this game. This little crimson line uh, point here, this dash point, is right outside the arena, but they didn't actually despawn it when the boss arena loads. I get my camera just right. You can just get out of the arena. This doesn't really have any long-term consequences, it just skips me from having to fight the boss. There we go. Alright, so this is Shantytown. It's a, uh, more or less the rough part of town, where all the, uh, the poor folk in town live. And all the rich people in this giant prison city is really what it is. I've more or less been like profiting off the of shanty town. So all these people here, we have to talk about them and find out kind of what the state of things is. And yeah, most of them are most of them have it fairly rough. So I'm gonna go to the shopkeeper and buy a bunch of baked potatoes. This will be useful for something later. Uh, we find here that uh, this character, the white cat, has been just throwing people in shanty town money. So we're gonna go tail her. A bunch of stuff happens in the skipped cutscenes, so I'm gonna follow her after. Her. There's a scene here where I'm supposed to chase after the white cat, but uh, God bless uh, accessibility functions. Uh, you can actually just skip doing that. The game will let you proceed as if you caught her. So, um, pretty much revealed here that the white cat is uh, one of the daughters of the Pendletons, uh, which is this rich family whose house that I was just in. Um, so she decides to join our party. Uh, so her name is Krisha. Um, she's the most useful character as has always been the most useful character in the end game of the speedruns here. Uh, she's also voiced in English by Christina V, who you might know as uh, Shantae. So, little fun fact here. Alright, uh, she also bestows upon you the ability to literally uh, walk up walls. So, we've just turned this game into anime Spider Man, basically. So, there's another skip here that I can do by manipulating my camera to skip past this gate here. So, let's, uh... Do it. So, yeah, there's a little crimson line point over here. Uh, you're just gonna see me using Cat for movement, predominantly, because she has the fastest movement speed in this game. Alright. It's a very tight window for when I can actually put the command for the dash. Sometimes it just buffers in, even when I fail it. It's nice, like, what happened there. So, 
I'm gonna skip ahead to- I skipped the first boss of this area, um, and I'm gonna skip ahead towards the arena for the second, but... We're not actually going to do that fight, and I made a slight movement error there, but I recovered. Also, Adol's a silent protagonist outside of, like, battle grunts, so Chris is kind of his voice a lot of the time in this game, I feel like. Alright, we're gonna do something really, really stupid here. Um, so... Uh, I'm gonna try and explain this afterwards. I need to focus here, because I've been having trouble with this all day. Yes, the map is very important. The map breaks all these games. Map is love, map is life. Okay, so I'm listening for that, and then... Four, five, six, seven, eight. Make a save. And load. Ah, uh, dang, I messed it up. Alright. Yeah, this is a trick to get out of bounds. Um, so I'm listening for voice commands, because I'm mashing the Crimson Line button. When you open the map, there's a couple of... It's like a frame where you can um, input something. And here I'm buffering in Crimson Lines and essentially moving it, pick, moving my character pixel by pixel. Getting the right amount here though is really tricky. Um, I didn't even get enough. I didn't even get enough inbounds. That stinks. Is my position bad? I don't know. This trick is really finicky. I have a backup save if I absolutely need it, but uh. I'm listening for the, like, voiced grunt. Just not getting enough distance out of this. Darn. I'm not too busy. You can uh, read off a donation or plug some stuff. Okay, we have a couple of donations coming in. We had a $20.99 donation from Bobby the Black Plastic, who then, two minutes later, decided to add another $30 donations on top of that, specifically saying another 30 to cheer on Ghost Kumo. We have uh, $20 from Edward Malice saying, always excited to support great gaming marathons for charity. Keep up the fun commentary. We have $5 from Starboy Vinny saying, loving the marathon so far, GG everyone. And all of those are being put to our fabulous targets and polls. Our current two polls are both character choice polls, one for the game rolled out, another for Mario Kart Wii, in which Luigi has pulled ahead of Waluigi, $155 to $84.35. And if you look at the donation track at the minute we are currently at $925 and me personally I think it would be really cool if we got to a thousand dollars during this run so I'm just saying I'm I'm not saying you got to but I'm saying it would be very cool if we did I don't know why this isn't working I'm just I'm clipping into the pillar here but I'm not clipping to where I need to go it's like, for me, it just it just seems to be random how many, like, inputs I need to do. Um, I'm gonna try this a couple more times, because I have a lot of extra time on my estimate here. And then I'll just load a backup save if I need to.
didn't even get enough supplies. Alright, uh, I hate to do this, but, uh, gotta move the marathon along. So I have a file that successfully gets me out of bounds here. So. Uh, that's bad. Movement here is really jank. So we'll just. Oh. Fix my previous loot save. So I had a, thankfully you can save pretty much anywhere. So you're gonna see me spamming uh, character swap here, and the reason for this, the reason for this is it lets me sort of extend my hover here. Uh, there we go. So huzzah, that skips the second boss here, and this allows us to end chapter uh, end, end chapter two um, without killing either boss of the dungeon. Alright, so we're basically busting this old man out of jail here. The guards come after us, but it's easy difficulty, so they die in like two hits. Yeah, that one particular out of bounds is probably the hardest one in the run. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of that, so shout out to Sonic Heroes for switching characters ex excessively for speed. So, that's it for chapter 2, and that's going to be the last chapter that we're going to do accordingly, because we're going to just go straight to the end game. <laughs> Alrighty. <clears throat> so, at the beginning of chapter 3 here, um, I'm going to have to talk to a bunch of NPCs in my, uh, in my house, which uh, we've basically converted to a bar as sort of like our... Uh, Disguise. You know, hiding in plain sight. This guy gives me rewards for map completion, but uh, we're not going to talk to him. So we'll talk to this handsome man here, Dogi, uh, his adult's best friend and one of the few recurring characters in the series. I need to get three of those, four of those, four of, one of, the, four of those, and I have five, uh, five of those already. Those are going to be useful for exchanging with something later. Shante, the barkeep. Uh, he's a pretty cool dude. And, uh, she's in a random position. This is Yufa. She'd be a party member later, but um, she's more or less just employed at my bar. Alright, so we're going to work back to uh, the Fountain Plaza here. Uh, because we've started up a quest and Guy is over here. He wasn't loaded on my screen for a second. Quest here. Talk to this kid, and we're basically tracking down some uh, a missing family because uh, they failed their rent payment for the month. Pretty sure there's a faster way, it's just... <laughs> Alright. So, the next thing I'm gonna do... I'm gonna run up this building here. I wanna set a warp point on top of the cathedral. Oh my god, I ran out of stamina. So, this part here is really tricky. Um, you're going to be seeing a lot of character swapping here. And I have this bound to turbo because this is absolutely murder on your fingers. The problem is turbo actually makes this less consistent than just raw mashing. So I'm, I'm waiting to see a particular frame in the animation here. Okay. There we go. So, I'm gonna just float across the space for hopefully a couple minutes without this completely breaking. 
And we just can infinitely gain height here if we keep this up. Uh, yes. Um, so funny that you mention Aaron Jaeger. Um, the voice of, uh... The voice of Adol in this game, in the dub, is Bryce Pappenbrook, who is the dub voice of Aaron Jaeger from the Attack on Titan anime. And I got unlucky there. My character switched out of their, uh, their, uh, monster mistake there. So, um, I gotta work back. Alright. Okay. Oh my god, I'm losing it again. Uh, that's not what I'm supposed to do there. Okay. Come on, load back it. Alright, I'm just gonna set the save here. Like, this particular trick just is, has no real consistency. And, like, you can mash it manually, but, like, it is murder on your fingers to try and do that. Oops. Well, I know I, I have the one that works when I see Adol's hand is, like, flipping his sword. Oh my gosh. Please don't screw this up again. It's, it's... So, the thing is, I have to be in my monster form for this to work. Like, this is inconsistent, but this is, like, actually just terrible marathon luck here. So I need to repeat this until I can get all the way over to the other end here, which is where the graveyard is. Um, that's the trigger for endgame, basically. Come on, dude. Are you, are you kidding me? Just, it'll randomly drop. I think it's because of the frame rate in this game is inconsistent that you'll just get dropped inputs. Alright, we're almost there, we're almost there, we're almost there. Yes! Okay, that's uh. That's one of the hardest ones. But. Yeah, that trick is extremely finicky. Um, also, I forgot to actually finish this quest in order, but it's fine. Alright. So now that I have that uh, warp point set up, we are Gucci. Oops. I'm trying to skip a cutscene here. <laughs> Alright. So... I thought this family was pulled into the, um... Turns out this family was pulled into the, um... Into this, like, mini Grimwald here. That's part- and, um... Uh, we basically need to save him, uh, by killing off another mob of enemies. Can I ever so quickly jump in for a second? Because Go we for it, have... let's just, uh... We have Combat hit one thousand dollars already, thanks to an oh my so generous sixty-five dollar donation from LV Creed. Just helping a community need simply because I can, but pushed us up to the one thousand mark. Ah, well, I, I'm a little bit blown away by that already. Oh my gosh, that all died. <laughs> oh, this is fine. This is fine. This is probably as good a time as any to put this on square. So, you're seeing uh, my damage done here is in these blue health bars. Um, these enemies are weak to slash, but resistant to strike, which is what Cat has. 
Oh, Mattel has Slash. So, um, that's just one of the quests that gets us, um... Basically, you can recruit people to your bar. Um, as kind of, you know, here to help you out. Um, this kid here is a, uh, basically a kid blacksmith. Like his dad, he was his dad uh, was a was a blacksmith, and his dad was sort of like a ghost that kept things going. There's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff to that uh, side quest here. But uh, these kids help us out, and we really want the blacksmith. Um, all right, so now we're gonna do something uh, really stupid here. Um, now that I have basically everything that I need, um, we're gonna do that same trick again, uh, only this time with a boss. So, I, I need to hit this boss in a particular way. Um, to where I don't kill him, I want to um, bring him down to 1 HP, or as, as close to 1 HP as I possibly can. And I forgot to lock on to him. I need to get him very close to dead, and then I need to break out of this arena here. I'm gonna actually set my ally to passive there. I have a keyboard command for that, which is why that looked a little awkward. Alright, so I'm break the paper from that, and then we're just gonna... The wrong area. I need to lose my bearings in here. Alright. I don't think this is it. Probably gonna... Oh, hey, we actually got it. Alright, so I need to get just high enough into this room that I can slip in through the cracks out of bounds. And I... There's supposed to be a visual indicator, and I didn't get it for some reason. Oh my god. I need to be careful here because my characters can do an attack in midair that he hits the boss and kills him if I'm not lo if I'm unlucky. All right. I think I can't, I'm not getting the visual indicator for some stupid reason. What the heck? Come on, dude. Oh, I took a risk going for. Uh, Trying to demonstrate this particular route. Alright. Okay, so that's my indicator that I'm out as I see my character move forward. And now that I have this boss defeated, I need to end the boss flag. So what I'm going to do is break out, and then... I'm gonna go over to the first boss of this area. And I'm gonna defeat that instead. So yeah, um, now we're back to the first boss of this area. And he's cake at this point. Like, one level higher than me, and it's the easy difficulty. Alrighty, so now I'm going to go back to that previous boss. I'm going to buffer in um, an attack rather than a crimson line. And... That is going to allow me to store this boss's uh, end... Uh, end flag here. Let's make sure I have this lined up. So I'm listening for another audio cue here. So I wait for the attack to go through and then I buffer in one more input. And while this boss death animation is playing... I'm gonna work back to the graveyard, and I'm gonna hold circle here because if I if I skip these cutscenes, uh, the trick doesn't work. 
But so the graveyard is the trigger for endgame. So I just stored a boss and uh, did a bit of a janky movement here because this gets the uh, this gets the party member uh, Anamona, aka Doll, uh, into our party for endgame. And uh, I actually just realized I need to reset this. I need to reset this uh, because um, I forgot something very important. Okay, that's uh, fine. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just a little bit nervous right now as well. Um, okay, my bad. Um, I'll have to re I'll have to redo the trick, but this is fine. Should still be underestimate. Like my estimate was based on an older route. So, I completely skipped this part. Changed up my movement, and then... Forgot it while doing commentary. <laughs> Alright, so... Yeah, I would not be able to proceed with the game if I, if I didn't do this. Alright. Alright, so... I need to... Buy those gloves, and then... As many of these as I can hold. Uh, make it absolutely the most positively sure that I have uh, I have those equipped what on you on you okay have that all set up and I gotta perform the trick again yeah that is the wrong chapter cutscene so I gotta redo this uh, fight again Green froze, just, like, or slowed down there for a second, so it cancelled my flash guard, and I just kind of stood there for, for no reason. Right, there we go. Yeah, this game is normally like a, uh... A 30 hour game. My first playthrough took, I think, 42, because I did pretty much every side quest. Alright. Oh my goodness. I think I forgot to save. Uh. Yep, I, I did. Okay. Uh, take three. <sighs> Somehow it did more damage there than I should have. Thought it was probably just judging me off on the side. That is to Jado for being the one to completely break this game. Alright. Uh, I those. Absolutely sure of everything. Alright, this time I will make sure to save. <laughs> yeah, this one's hard. This one went from like... <laughs> this one went from like... Decently tricky to like actually genuinely uh, inconsistent and difficult. Which is why I didn't bother to change my estimate um, when I... Um, uh, decided to go with a... Uh, the harder route here, which admittedly we hadn't really considered the possibility of turbo until fairly recently, so. Uh, I forgot to set my ally command. I'm just gonna keep her on defense. I'm gonna make this fight a little bit slower, but. Jerk. The problem with this trick is that I can't I can't save midway through it. I have to go from the start of this fight. Okay. 
Yeah. Alright, this should do it. Okay, I guess it's not. This should do it? Fingers crossed. I can't really cross my fingers because I'm using like seven fingers on my, on my controller right now. That should do it. Beast cap. Beast. Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, so the rapid character switching thing is in East 8, but East 8's so comically broken, you can actually get to the credits in 12 minutes from... What on earth is going on with my camera here? I have never seen... Oh my god, what's going on with my camera here? Oh, I'm still locked onto the boss for some reason. How did that happen? I'm getting a lot of that's never happened before, and I'm having a very difficult time mentally adjusting. <laughs> oh, this game is glorious. So how's everybody doing today? <laughs> right. Oh, he come back. Oh, this should be not damage. There we go. Elegantly fractured. That's a great way to describe these eight. All right. All right. We're making ten thousand percent sure I have the poison gloves equipped. All right. Buffering in an attack here, and I'm gonna wait. So, basically, this repeat what I'm doing here is repeatedly um, inching the game forward frame by frame, while also buffering in uh, very precise inputs. That might be too slow. Uh, that might be too slow. Okay, it should be good. Let's go. All right. What's wrong? So this should be correct. So. Essentially what I'm going to be doing is I'm skipping straight to endgame. Now, that might sound really weird, because this game has a humongous monster gauntlet uh, as its initiation to endgame. And the enemies you're going to see here... Yeah, that's how we know we got it. So yeah, now we're in the final chapter of the game. Uh, let's set you. Uh, these enemies are level 70, and we're level 10. Uh, so I bought a metric ton of revive items. And you might be wondering, how the hell are you supposed to kill enemies that are, you know, literally 60 levels above you? Well, the answer to that is actually really simple. Uh, these are uh, the Lemurians are considered basic enemies, which means they're susceptible to status effects. Oops. Uh, I want to have one of these on. It helps out. Like, it's not... It's not run ending if I don't have that on, but uh. So I hit them with poison, and poison inflicts percentage damage, and poison can kill in this game. So, yeah, we're able to beat enemies from like the 70s at level like 8. <laughs> uh, it's very slow and very grueling. There's a lot of enemies that are, and they're hard to keep track of. And trying to flashguard some of their attacks is really difficult. Um. This is why we do this on the easy difficulty. If there's anything higher than this, we would just not have enough EXP for endgame. Alright, so 
this is wave one of, I think, five. Um, I'm gonna start actually being able to do some damage to these guys, because I'm building up levels like nobody's business. Uh, I mistakenly switched out of cap there. So, this is another nice little perk of the easy difficulty, is that uh, boost just gives you a humongous defensive uh, upgrade, as well as it, um... Uh, you regenerate health every time. It's actually detrimental to, to the very, very late game, but uh, at this point in the run it's fine. Yeah, um, Binder to Action RPG develop. Uh, healing items OP. Unfortunately, I have a little bit more familiarity with this particular fight with the third character that was originally in the previous route of this game. Uh, his name's Greedo, and he is really good at bursting these enemies down. Uh, thankfully, plant attacks have really um, predictable um, patterns, so I can usually flash guard them, but it's just these giant enemy gauntlets, and you're meant to like actually have you know real stats. Nice thing, too, by the way. Um, uh, revive items? Uh, your characters take a second before they die, so... If you use a revive item quickly enough, um, your characters don't swap over. Another big potato. And this is going to be five gauntlets of, of these enemies, so if you got any donations or plugs or anything, go right ahead. It's just going to be just me swinging my sword for several minutes. I definitely do. We have a $10 donation from Lazarus with a comment, A good cause to support or watching Ease, one of my favorite franchises of all time. I'm entirely okay with this. Best of luck with the runs and reaching all of the goals. And if you're wondering where all of this, where all of these donations are going, we are raising money for the Trevor Project. Trevor Project is an organization that works to save young lives by providing support through free and confidential suicide prevention, crisis intervention programs, and platforms where young people spend their time. They have a 24-7 phone, lifeline, chat, text, and soon to come integrations with social media platforms. The Trevor Project aims to always be there for LGBTQ youth in crisis with a clear message. They should be proud of who they are and that they are not alone. So, because I don't do a ton of damage to these enemies, what this fight really boils down to is making sure I keep poison on them as long as possible. There's a meter underneath their uh, health bar that uh, tells me that the enemy is, is uh, successfully poisoned. And this fight's been going kind of poorly because uh, I've been certainly switching out of characters, which ends my boost state uh, prematurely. Right on it. This guy right here is the biggest jerk of them all. So the best thing to see is when that uh, poison meter is uh, red. It means that they're the most. Uh, means that it's gonna sustain the longest. Oh. The cat just being completely useless. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Yeah, you're meant to be, like, in your high 60s for this particular part of the game, and we're just doing this as... I mean, we started this at level 8, so... 
The fact that this is even possible at all is kind of a miracle, and I have uh, a huge shoutouts to the uh, Japanese speedrunning community of this game, who kind of broke things uh, very early uh, by figuring out a lot of this uh, stuff. Um, originally, they actually had a uh, glitch on the um, PS4 version of this game, on the very first Japanese version, where you could... Um, there we go. Yeah, there was originally a glitch on the original Japanese version where you could actually freeze enemies in place um, with a skill, uh, like a really powerful skill, and then uh, pause, uh, and then just repeatedly uh, flash guard like an attack that's just in a suspended animation. Um, but that unfortunately has been patched, or I guess fortunately, because I think this category is a lot more interesting. And just like freezing enemies in place, like just not a threat at all. So we're on the pathway here to the final dungeon. And I need to kill off a few more enemy waves. Um to clear each barrier here. I know I have been Screwing this combat up. I usually bind my uh, demonic uh, scythe to square. Also, I need to remember Vermilion Scythe. You know what? Let's just make just nip this in the bud now. My attack button is uh, square, so I usually set my primary skill to square in this game. Um, and I don't use a rising slash a lot. I do have a 90 SP skill bound to my triangle button, but it's um, it's expensive, and it's, it's really only good for like areas of effect, rather than trying to hit an enemy over and over again to keep the poison on him, which is pretty much why I'm hitting these enemies so darn much. Uh, I actually got the right lock on this time. One of those up. There we go. Alright, so two more waves left of this, and then... We're gonna have to bust our way through the final dungeon with far less than what it was meant to have. Yes. Also keep in mind, we have starting equipment, um, which is the biggest reason why we unlocked the um, blacksmith back in town, is he can fuse the best uh, stuff in the game. Okay. Right. Let me get through. We've been through a lot together in the whole 56 minutes that we've known each other. It's one of the things that I've learned. Wait, oh, my, my controls are reversed. Yeah, so some enemies can hit you with confusion, which reverses your controls. It is as miserable as it sounds, if not worse. Especially because in that particular moment I couldn't see what was going on, so I thought... I couldn't see the thing indicating that I had confusion. So. This spinny guy is the worst enemy here. He has the most HP, which means that he has to grind down the longest. I didn't even see my guy die there. I promise you, this can be a lot cleaner, but uh... 
I know. Sometimes just bad happens in the marathon. Alright, so now I can finally enter the final dungeon. Alright, so now we are finally in the uh, Prison of Yore, and the first thing we're going to do is immediately clip out of bounds. <laughs> so... so I'm going to get over here, and then once again I'm going to be Crimson Line buffering here. So I hear that sound effect, I listen for the dash, and then I buffer it 12 times for this one. Oops, uh... Should have me out of bounds here. Alright, so you're gonna see I actually have a, a new party member in tow. Uh, this is, this is a doll. He's really cool. Um. Also, I can do this now. Um, her animations are a little bit different. You can get past that wall with ease. So Cat's actually going to be the most important character for the next little bit here. I'm going to make a uh, save here. Probably should have done this first. And not switch character. So this enemy here drops an item called the Otherworldly Core. Um, and Cat has an ability that... Uh, Trying to make sure I didn't accidentally save over it. Uh, Cat has an ability to steal, and I just stole two of them. The game is paying me back in, like, the worst way there. Because I don't even need two, I only need one. And it's like, I can be at that for, like, well over a minute. <laughs> just trying to get that random drop, so the fact that I got two there is just... is, is a meme. <laughs> oh, man. Alright, so, let's see. Is that a bounce stuff's not super hard to learn? It's just, it's kind of finicky. It's the, um... It's the hover that's actually really difficult. Please tell me I got out of bounds. Oh dang, I didn't. Alright, try that again. This one I have to do like a lot more than I did there. There we go. Get to one point over here. Ready. Here we go. Uh, uh, uh. Now this is the longest extended hover in the game. Um, it's a lot easier when you have the Hawking Toe because his ability uh, is kind of busted for this. Uh, I'm gonna make a save here, just so I... <laughs> do this. 
the uh, fluctuations in frame rate can really screw this over. All right, um, make one little change here, real quick. And now I should be able to just fly my way over to the center room of this final dungeon here. So, you can do this with mashing. This is actually faster with mashing, but it, like, really kind of hurts your hands. So, I actually have this currently set on turbo. Um, the problem is the turbo is just really inconsistent, but it saves my thumbs. So, um, I had to kind of come up with a fairly impromptu setup, so there might be something better in the works down the line. Alright, so... Could be all the way over to the final uh, area here. Yeah. Right, that worked out better than it often does, surprisingly. Yeah, it's a very specific sequence, and you need to go into your Steam configurations to double bind stuff. Um, we're pretty cool about most of that kind of stuff, like using Steam's controller settings to allow you to bind multiple things to the same button. Um, in fact, some East games, like East uh, Salsetta, actually natively has that in the game, but because anyone can do it on Steam, it's like, it's generally fair game. Alright, so we're gonna do one final out of bounds here. And this one used to give me a lot more trouble, but I've been finding myself more consistent at it. Really more consistent than I've been at some of these other tricks. I'll make sure I have my camera angle. Killer way. Uh, I have had it there. Definitely didn't have it there. I need to get on the ceiling here. And I'll know when I got it because I can I can do the the run up the little part of the wall there. It's all screwed up. Technically speaking, we don't need to have Doll in the party, but um, she gives us a nice little buff, which is why we have her. Uh, let's see if this works. Oh, I actually got it. I didn't get didn't get far enough. That's my jump up there. I, I ran too far. I had, I had it right there, I just ran too far up the wall. Okay. Up somehow. Come on. I think some of this is just nerves, and some of this is just. You know, marathon luck. It's the run in general, anyways. Ah, I messed it up again. Needed to do it more that time. Oh, I... Yeah, I must have just ran up too high. Okay. Switch. 
Bull's audio cues are a little weird too, is the problem. Uh, Alright, I'm gonna do this a couple more times. And then um, I have a safety save for this, thankfully. Ah, still not getting it. Alright, I'm gonna try this one last time. And then we got an event to keep up with. Uh, I'm just gonna load my back up here because I don't wanna keep you waiting too long. Okay. So we're gonna get it out of bounds here. And load that particular save. So we're gonna do that. This should do it. Alright. Alright, this is the last one of these stupid hovers. And I still somehow messed that up. It's not so much that I messed it up, so much as, uh... Just inputs just drop somewhere. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been practicing this for several of the last few hours, but I guess the marathon setting has just been kind of jinxing me a little bit. All right, if I see uh, if I see Cat with a downward thrust, I'll pause, save, and try. And uh... yeah, that is the hardest clip in the game. Um, though I seem to have more trouble with the clip in uh, the previous boss, but yeah, so. I got the random, like, the kind of random parts really fast, and then, like, the parts that are just, uh, volatile. <laughs> uh, have not gone well. Alright, uh, I should just be able to hold hover here, which is a lot easier to, to manage. So what I'm doing over here is I'm going to uh, part of the final dungeon. Um, the way the final dungeon of this game works is there's a big area in the center and you're supposed to go to these three paths on the right, or on, sorry, not on the right, three, these three paths on separate sides. And each one of them has really nice rewards and a boss that gives you like a key to the final, um, it gives you a key to unlock the barrier basically. Not like a key, but like, you need to do all three to unlock this final barrier. Um, thanks to this pause buffer here, which is the easiest flip in the game. I just have to actually, like, get the clip. Uh, we can just get straight to the end there. And then load. I messed it up. Of course, the e wait. That somehow got in there. Get in there, dang it. There, I got it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Am 
I really doing this? Alright, just pretend I got off that clip. It's, it's done exactly the way that I've shown you. <laughs> we did it! We did it! This is why you, this is why you have backup saves for marathons, everybody. And then finally we're gonna flop our way up here. A lot of slopes here, so this, this animation looks really janky. I love it. Let's take a break. No, you. Alright, so this gate here is to the final boss. We just skipped basically everything in the final dungeon with a few out of bounds. And, um. I actually forgot to show this off. Um, but you're supposed to warp out to, um. You're supposed to warp out to, um. God, I'm like losing my train of thought. Okay, I have everything equipped. So in the dungeon, I picked up an item called the Working's uh, Cape that uh, increases the damage that I deal with when I'm um, increases the damage I deal when I'm at low health. Uh, it's just another reason why the difficulty doesn't matter. We actually want to take more damage here. Um, the other thing is, um, I picked up a uh, I picked up a recipe um, in that treasure chest that I clipped out of bounds for that lets me uh, go to the blacksmith and make a. Um, and make a, uh, a really powerful weapon, uh, depending on the ingredients I have. And we make it for Cat. Um, so Cat's going to be our main character for the end game here, because she has this skill called uh, Serbarian Thrust here, which is where I repeatedly punch and scream at an enemy, and they just take a lot of damage. But right now, I'm actually trying to sandbag a little bit. Because, uh... This boss, who you might notice is level uh, 83, and I'm level 54, it's, uh, it has a lot of HP. So, the actual strat here is, uh, for the speedrun, is to spam Siberian Thrust, and then uh, get enough uh, boost meter to get a full boost. And then just spam that over and over again, trying to keep my HP uh, low so that I, I get that low HP damage bonus. Alright, so the death there actually isn't that big a deal. Because uh, it can revive with 100 HP at a, at a whim. Alright, so this is phase one of the final boss of this game. Don't ask how we got here. That's uh, a whole bunch of jank to the final dungeon of this game, and we've skipped so much story context that, like... I honestly could probably spend the entirety of this run explaining, like, from this point to the end and just sit still here, and I still probably wouldn't be able to explain the context. This fight's a lot of just spamming the same stuff over and over again. So if you got any donations, you got any uh, plugs or anything, go right ahead. We're just going to be doing the same two inputs over and over again here. We have uh, a few donations to pull through. We have a one dollar and one cent donation from Ori Sky, who then, <laughs> who then later <laughs> gave us twenty-two dollars and seventy-seven cents. And I don't know if there's. Uh, a secret meaning behind those weirdly specific numbers, but I'm here for it. I did see the chat making a lot of uh, ease puns earlier, and I will read any and all pun donations that come in. I love a pun donation, so get them in, get them read out. I will read any and all puns you give me. Um, in our polls section, whenever you donate, you can give towards a poll. We have two polls going on at the minute. We have two character choice polls, one for Rolled Out and one for Mario Kart Wii, in which Luigi has continued to storm ahead with $170. So, 
Our next closest in that is Waluigi with $108. So if you would like to see Luigi dethroned as the Mario Kart Wii character of choice, you know where to put your donation. Yeah, so as John was alluding to in chat, um, old version of this fight was really jank, and yeah, fighting this guy with chapter 3 weapons would make this fight take an eternity. Thankfully due to Out of Bounds, we're able to get one piece of endgame equipment, and that's just enough. Yeah, I didn't like the fact that this route has significantly higher um, a higher ceiling in terms of its ability to go fast. It also has a, a significantly lower floor, um, rel like relative. Oh, I didn't change my estimate because there's a lot more room for uh, bad stuff to happen. So. <laughs> As it has. So here's phase two. So we should still, even with the three, you know, backup loads and me just screwing everything up, we should still be under estimate here. That's the main reason I didn't change my estimate, because I knew, like, if this run goes really well, we could crush the estimate, and this run goes really poorly. Um, uh, oh. We have. <laughs> We have what happens, so... Uh, anyways, so... In traditional East Final boss fashion, uh, this boss is... really big, dumb, and has multiple phases. But because of the combo of Cerberian Burst and, uh... Uh, just... That's yeah, really powerful, um... Extra skill, sorry. Got something stuck in my throat there for a second. Um, you make relatively quick work of this of uh, this fight. So, ah, uh, darn. Trying to actually take damage here. For whatever reason, I have a really hard time doing that. Oh, I didn't even finish this off. It's fine. First cats to bless white cat. Alright, uh, so I'm gonna wait for this to blow up on me, it's gonna do a lot of damage. Alright. Now that should make this fight a little bit quicker. This should make the fight a lot a bit quicker. Alright, so that takes care of that. By the way, this fight is actually ass. Like, excuse the minor profanity, but this fight is... This fight is awful casually. It's awful in the speed run. It's awful in every route of the speed run. It's not a particularly fun fight. <laughs> so... That's not just me saying that because of how this run is going, that's just me saying that because this fight is bad. But, um, yeah, there's just so many things you have to hit and follow, but the real reason this fight kind of stinks is, uh, the second phase here. Um, normally the second phase of this fight, uh, you have Doll's uh, special ability, which is the ability to see hidden things. Um, because we got her at a different point than when she joins, we never actually unlocked her um, special ability. So, yeah, we can't find out this boss's weakness. He has these six spikes on his back, and one of them is weak at any given point in time. So, unfortunately, I just have to guess. So, the run, this is an area where the run is uh, definitely more tri uh, trial and error RNG at this point. Or beholden to the random number generation.
other problems. Cat loves to downward thrust when you're in the air. I'm actually running kind of low on, on revive items here. Donation? Go for it. I'm just I'm just sitting here hitting hitting these things and getting really unlucky. We have twenty dollars from Silent Tremor. How does the barber cut the moon's hair? He clips it. <laughs> I like that more than I should. <laughs> That's actually really good. I'm always a sucker for a good pun. I love them all. I love all puns equally. Alright, so, second verse, same as the first in terms of how to actually effectively deal damage. Spam her Cerberian Burst, um, which gives you enough boost really quickly to use your extra skill. And then you use your extra skill, which gives you enough SP to just use the Cerberian Burst again. Alright, so now we're up to second, now we're up to his second half. So... I can use an extra skill here to try and, uh, I actually got three there, I don't usually get three. Open one of these. This is good, yep. Alright, so I figured out a third, third one now. Alright, so these, the other problem with the spike is these uh, platforms that you dash to love to go up and down, so whether or not you have like ready access to any given uh, spike at any point in time is uh, not really up to you. They are, there's a cycle there, but the fight is so chaotic that you often can't keep track of it, and I missed half of my damage there. So, just a couple more skills. It'll all be over. Uh, so time is actually going to be uh, as the start of the credits, which is a few minutes from now. Um, it's just after the last input. This should finish. Alright, so this is a cutscene here. Uh, Adol's hearing a bunch of voices of characters from games past. Uh, if you don't know anything about those games, this means pretty much nothing. East 9 is kind of just this nice little, um... Well, I don't know if I want to say, like, an anniversary thing, because it's, like, the 33rd year after the game came out. But, um... There's a lot of references to other East games in this one. Um, we skipped almost all of them, but yeah, this game's really cool. Um, I'd say it's not quite my favorite. I'd put it as like number four or number five. But um, uh, yeah, this whole series is one of my favorites of all time. Um, I speedrun East Origins, Memories of Soul Set. I've speedrun one. Um, and dabbled into eight and Ark, and Felgana, and, uh, kind of speed run this one. <laughs> uh, this run has not been the greatest indicator of that. I've had fun, and it's been cool hanging out. It's it's for a good cause, so. Uh, I hope y'all have enjoyed, despite my, uh, some of my gameplay issues. Um, anyways. So, that is the final boss, and we just need to basically resolve our final ends and then leave town for the next adventure. As is tradition for every East game, for Adol to just kind of leave. <laughs> Exclamation mark egg. Alright. A little bit more movement here. 
Some of it was just the just the like nature of trying to use turbo to make certain sections not kill my hands, but make them significantly less reliable. And some of it was just I was not able to execute on on those. So admittedly, like this marathon, um, I, I kind of put in ES8 like as a on a whim. I didn't know if it would be accepted or not. And I haven't had as much time to practice as I would like, but um, still came out under estimate here, so, you know, minus the, the flubs here. So time will be coming up very shortly. And... That'd be time. So. Um, what's my timer even say? I have a timer running in the background. My timer says 128. Um, yeah, the of song in this game is really good. Um, yeah, so I skipped a couple portions. I had to load several backup saves, you know. Like, if this run... If there is one thing to learn from this run, it's that if you can, make backup saves. Because this game, you can save anywhere, which is really helpful for uh, getting things going. But yeah, if you're at all interested in speedrunning this game, um, or any of the other East games, and we do have glitchless categories for a few of them, um, we have a pretty cool uh, community... Um, I'm just going to skip the credits here. Very good song, but uh, I do kind of want to get this going because the setup took us a while, so I don't want to keep things going. Uh, please get your donations in for um, the Trevor Project. Uh, fantastic cause. Uh, you know, near and dear to my heart with me having a lot of LGBTQ friends who've gone through some tough times in their lives. Um, I didn't particularly know the only kid. I talked with them briefly. Um, with organizing the previous fast pace event. So I, I definitely could feel, you know, how much the uh, community around them, you know, cared for them. So that's a big part of why I wanted to be a part of this marathon. And also just a lot of people involved here that I know in the community. So, um, yeah, big shout outs to the fast pace community for, or fast pace committee for accepting me with this game. Um, I will be doing another run later on this weekend. Um, that one, it doesn't matter how I do. Like, that game is in the uh, awful slash silly block, and if, if bad things happen in that game, that's just how that game works. Uh, so I'll be back on Sunday morning with Jimmy Johnson's. <laughs> As, uh, it's such a silly game. Uh, look forward to that, and uh, look forward to the rest of this event. How do we get $1,000 in been less than six hours since we started? Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Um, but that'll do it for me with uh, East Nine. Um, take it away. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for that run, Ghost Kumo. A fantastic run, overcoming some difficult, very difficult looking tricks there. Before we go into mission, we're going to hear a me message in memory of the only kid. I met Kid in 2018 through the Sonic 3D Blast community, aka the International Isometric Salt Mine, which still, I would think, is the best name for any kind of community out there. Um, I also had the privilege of working with them in commentary, being able to talk to them in DMs when it comes to doing tech checks or discussing commentary, who's going to say what. But honestly, uh, they were the star of the show when it comes to commentary. and. I would just feed off their energy whenever they would talk highly of Knuckles or say something ridiculously funny that would make you laugh and somehow make you lose your composure during commentary. But honestly, those are the best times that I've had with Kid. Uh, I never had a chance to meet them in person. I honestly wish I did. But, you know, throughout the years that we've known each other, uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to get to know them as a person as well as being able to just, you know, have fun on commentary or, or anything like that, or just even talking in general. Um, it's a very big loss for the community. Uh, we're definitely going to miss you, kid. May you rest in peace, and I hope to see you again soon.